We're beginning a new series today. We call it God at the Movies. And I really enjoy teaching this series every year. This is the third time I've done this because I believe you've heard this statement, a picture's worth a thousand words, right? Well, how much is a moving picture worth? A lot, right? Because it's worth at least a million because you've got all the cinematic music in the background and all of that stuff going on. So I just want to begin today by throwing out a few quick statements, all right? God at the movies is not Christianity light, okay? We're going to deal with heavy themes this, this year. In fact, three of the four movies are actually real stories that occurred in the, in the lives of, of people. And uh, we're going to look today at how to be a light in a dark world. That is not Christianity light. The second thing I want to let you know is that the Apostle Paul in the New Testament, he quoted from the theater. You'll have to look that up and find out where that is. It's in the book of Acts. Uh, and uh, the third thing is Jesus told lots of stories as illustrations all right so if you read the new testament you know that uh, the fourth thing is listen this series is easy to invite people to come to all right it's easy say my pastor's preaching god at the movies it's interesting you can invite people and the fifth thing is that it's kind of fun to have a little popcorn and water as in church all right and so we're just going to jump right into the word today how to be a light in a dark world now here's the thing we know that when jesus came to planet earth it was a dark time right it was such a dark time that there had actually not been any revelation from God for 400 years. And the religious leaders who should have recognized the light coming into the world, they were so blinded, so hardened that they completely failed. They rejected him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Let's read it today. It says this, In Him, in Jesus, was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. How many of you realize that the same thing is happening in our world today? I believe that, 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 that the light of Jesus Christ is still shining out into the darkness. But sometimes the light does not, is not comprehended by those who see it. And how many of you also realize that you and I are the light of the world? Right? How many of you say, I want to be a light to this world? I want to let my light shine. All right. We could insert the little kid song, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Right? The word says this, Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. I am the light of the world. We reflect Christ to the world. All right. And so we've got to let our light shine. The movie that we're going to use today as an illustration comes from a dark time in American history. If you're easily offended by uh, certain things, maybe this isn't a movie for you. But it is a great movie. I've done the very best I can to bleep out a few words. But uh, I watched the movie. I enjoyed the movie. But uh, this is what the movie comes from a very dark time in American history. It's set back in 1962. Some of you are thinking, man, that's a long time ago. I was only three. Okay. Many of you might realize that in 1962, particularly in the South, in the United States of America, there were no churches like this one where all kinds of different races came together and met, met with the Lord in, in, in love and harmony. It was a day, unfortunately, when there was a huge amount of prejudice in our culture and in our society. So what we're going to do today, we're just going to jump right into the movie and show you the opening scene where our two main characters meet each other. And then we're going to give you a little synopsis of the movie. Enjoy today. How many of you can see a little bit of tension, a little clash there, right? Well, this is a great story because it's about light and darkness. So let me give you a quick synopsis of the movie. Two men, one uh, Caucasian, one African American from polar opposite backgrounds with wildly contrasting personalities get thrown together under very unusual circumstances. They learn from each other, change each other for the better, and discover that, guess what? 
They're not so different after all. It's a mismatched buddy road trip movie with a message, and it also happens to be inspired by a true story. So let's just go back for just a moment to our verse from John the Apostle, uh, where he's telling his version of the Christmas story. And by the way, this is a, an interesting uh, fact about the movie, that it deals with the eight weeks coming up to and ends uh, on, uh, on Christmas Day. So that's certainly appropriate for light coming into the world. But let me just read this verse again. John 1, 4 and 5, it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend, or we want to say overtake it. Uh, that word comprehend, that's a good translation, you know. But how many of you realize that there's a lot of meanings and subtle differences in translations and meanings of words? And another way to look at this word that is translated here, comprehend, another meaning for that very word in the Greek is the word overtake. And so the darkness did not overtake the light. So how, how many of you know that when the light of Jesus came into the world, it was impossible for darkness to overtake it? Come on. It's impossible for that to happen. No light overtakes darkness. When light comes, the, dark, the, the darkness doesn't comprehend it, nor does the darkness win. How many of you know that light always wins out over darkness? And that's what I believe that this movie illustrates. Because you see, back in the culture of 1962 in America, in the deep south, the darkness breeds all of the mistrust and the oppression and the prejudice that you see in this movie. So as the movie goes on, Tony accepts the job and they begin to travel and it's about the encounters that they have and there is inevitably quite a bit of trouble that takes place. Now this took place in 1962 and so this next little clip I'm going to show you is made up of two clips and the first one deals with what they call the green book which is the name of the movie. Uh, you at least kind of grasp a little bit of that and then the second is later on the clip that you'll see is later on in in this in the town of Macon Georgia an incident that happened and I want you to especially look at Tony's face as he leaves the store okay so anyway we're going to watch this second clip enjoy can't play the piano can he uh, by the look on Tony's face as he was leaving the tailor shop, that look actually is very priceless. It, it, it speaks of vol volumes, and uh, the truth is that Tony was remembering in that moment, because if you had seen the opening scenes of the, uh, of the movie, you know, uh, his feelings toward African Americans were completely different at that point. In fact, some African Americans have been working in his home in the movie, and uh, much to his irritation, his wife gave them something to drink. And uh, he, after they had left, he went into the kitchen, took the glasses, and threw those glasses away. So as Tony was leaving the shop, he was remembering his own heart. He was remembering his own attitude. He, and, and reality dawns on him as he remembers. And so the question before is, how can we be a light? in darkness and I believe the first answer to that is number one by remembering our history we are greater if we remember and lesser if we forget and I believe that that's true not just for us individually but also for us as a nation we need to remember our history it's part of who we are and I'm going to be honest today and let you know that Satan really tried to plant a seed of prejudice down in my heart when I was in the seventh grade. There was a, a, a bully. How many of you know bullies are nothing new? There was a bully in the seventh grade who would come into the, the, the gym. The only class I ever had with him was gym. And uh, he would pretty much beat people up and take their lunch money. Now, this never happened to me, but this guy was very mean about it. He would grab them by the shirt collar, spit in their face. And, and this young man was a Hispanic young man. And, and uh, man, I'll tell you, I got where I just did 
not like people like that. Satan planted a seed of hatred down inside of my heart. I was in the seventh grade. I was about 12 years old, all right. Well, in the 10th grade, we moved from Hearst, Texas to Worthington, Minnesota. And by the time I got to the 12th grade, something interesting happened to me. And that was that there was only one Hispanic guy in my whole class. His name was Lionel Lomas. And wouldn't you know it that God and his providence would have to get us assigned to the very same assignment. And guess what? I found out that Lionel Lomas was a cool guy. We became really good friends and all that prejudice just got out, torn out of my heart. But I honestly believe that I'm more, if I remember that, I'm more if I remember that. And that's why I believe that community is important. I believe that it's important that churches have more than one generation. And it's important that families honor our grandparents and our mothers and our dads and our aunts and uncles. Because they have a history and they can remember. And then we can listen to them and, and, and learn from one generation to the next. How many of you think that's really true? And the generation of adults that this story is about is about the post-depression generation. And I don't know if you realize that they have a name for that generation. I don't know who coined this, but they call that the great generation. It was a great generation because they overcame the depression. They fought two world wars, and uh, they're known in history as the great generation. But how incredible that the great generation had this great big blind spot uh, right down in front of them. And I don't know about you, but when I watch a clip like that and this guy's like no you can't even try on that suit I don't know about you but it angers me does anybody else feel that way hello it angers me uh, and, and so and so it's important that 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 we apply this to our lives because you see it's easy once you've been saved for a while who's been saved over 20 years raise your hand come on you've know who's been saved over 40 you don't have to raise your hand but I can raise my hand all right you've been saved a long long time you know it's it's easy to forget what your life was like when you weren't saved Thank you so very much. You know, you, we, we, we become, so the next time, well, listen, the next time you become aware that there's darkness all around you, and how many have ever felt that? There's dark, you could be, you could be in Walmart and just think all of a sudden you see a, a, something going on where there's darkness all around you. Around you, you know. Yesterday, I was coming to the church, and and uh, there was a couple out here in the parking lot, not in our parking lot, but across the street, and they were having a big fight, and they were cursing at each other, calling each other names, and and I just re all of a sudden, I'm just thinking, man, th th there's there, there, there's evil everywhere, there's darkness everywhere, and something bad is going on there. Uh, but we cannot forget that yes, we're the light, but we also have to remember that we once walked in darkness. Because how many of you realize that you would act a little difference toward the one who cusses every other word when you remember that 25 30 years ago that's the way you used to talk come on somebody do I have an amen amen you, you your light may shine a little different if you come upon someone at your job and you realize that they may be involved in in something where they're sinning sexually and you you might you might think well I, I need to you know act a certain way towards them but listen you got to remember my friend that some of us have also sinned sexually hello that tempers our heart that makes us love people more how many of you say I want to love the person in front of me as much as I can come on somebody give the Lord a big hand of praise amen amen we've got to be that light and so you say what do I got to do to really be the light to the world first of all if you're going to be the light you, how do you live you've got to walk in the light come on <laughs> 